in my art practice, I look at ways in which our conceptions of the world differ from a cold, hard, physical reality. And this has led me into some, frankly, kind of unexpected territory. And so I'm going to take you through a few examples today. I took these photographs in 2012 when I first came to New York. And these are of rocks on a dark studio floor, and they're coated with light. And rocks for me were very symbolic of coldness and of remoteness and of lifelessness. So I decided to try and modify that perception. And I tried to mix in a sense of immediacy and agency and movement up onto these rocks. So here's a clip of the process behind that. And I'm drawing light here directly onto the rocks. And I have to say that it was so visually engaging to be able to work with the richness of these textures in this way. So in this project, I'm exploring depth video. And this is an incredible technology because you can shoot scenes from one position and then you can re-render the scene from any other position in post-production, even from behind a wall. So I shot these scenes in the winding tunnels of the London Underground, and I was thinking about how we conceive of the built urban environment of mass cities, and this paradox of how, even when we're surrounded by millions of people, we can actually feel very isolated. In the summer of 2015, I was making sketches every day, and on the screen here, you're going to see some examples. But during this period, I've been dealing with a major life-changing event. I had been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and this means that I had to think very carefully about my blood sugar levels, and I had to start injecting insulin very frequently. And this made me reflect about the way that we conceive of our own physical bodies, and it made me think a lot about my own blood. I started wearing a body sensor, and this broadcasts my blood glucose values, and I stitched that together using some open source tools and developed those sketches from earlier all into this installation, which is called insulin, and this expresses what those numbers mean to me emotionally on a minute-by-minute -minute basis as they come in every day. Uh, 91 is a healthy value. Very low values, like 53, can be potentially dangerous. And in this case, I can feel heartbeat, shaking, sweating, and so on. High values cause a constriction in the flow of the animation. Now. High values don't cause me any immediate symptoms, but lots of high numbers over time accrue. And these cause a variety of body-wide complications. I could list those for you, but they're horrific. And so the effect on me is actually psychological. I put a lot of energy and time into trying to keep those numbers healthy every day. So I've been living with this very personal condition, which I have to acknowledge in order to deal with, in order to survive. But then I realized all of us collectively have a very similar condition and it's just as bad, it's just as urgent, and it's just as life-threatening. And that's climate change. When you compare these two conditions, you have to scale up from my personal reaction to this situation up to our species-wide reaction to the diagnosis. And there's something about how big and how all-encompassing climate change is, where we say, yes, it's urgent, yes, it's existential, but then we collectively allow it to slip down in our priority list. Whereas I and most people with diabetes, we want to learn about the condition and we want to act on it and we want to put it very high on our list. So here we have these two cold, hard, physical realities. And because of our conceptions of them and how those are different, our reactions to them are different too. So I think we have to bring these conceptions together. And it's something that I think we can all do. It's not just about environmentalists. This is something that we should make a priority in all of our communities. And we need to acknowledge and we need to accept that we're in a critical condition. Because only then are we really going to start to act like we're in an emergency.